I know a lot about fear because I have always experienced it in every way. As children do, they get scared of the dark or they're scared of what's under their bed and then their parent or guardian, whoever it is, comes in and says, there's nothing under your bed. And then at some point you start believing that. And I went just the opposite direction where my mom would come in and say, there's nothing under your bed. And then that would make me convinced that there was. I realized that I was not making any headway in getting rid of my fears or overcoming those fears. So I might as well just invite them into my life and take control of them as much as possible. So I started creating images that deal with fear and not only deal with it conceptually, but also that take me into the places that I'm afraid of, like deep water, for example. I would rather be in my creative space dealing with that than be in a really fearful place dealing with that. And that's the beauty of creating, is that it allows you to express and experience those fears that you may have. Oh yeah, she did, I think she did I really like this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's working way better than this, it's fierce. I'm very different from my work. And it's kind of a weird thing to talk about because I have met artists who are very artsy and who believe that you should live and breathe your art and that if you are not like your art, then you're not creating authentically. And I've met other people who don't care at all and they're shocked to see that I'm not dark and weird and creepy, although I am weird and maybe sometimes creepy, but generally not. I may be small, but but I'm very strong. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. Even if someone isn't exactly like their art, they still have a deep connection to it. I would never have started creating dark work if I didn't have darkness in me. And everyone has both sides, no matter who you are. I grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, which is known for being Amish country. So there are tons of Amish people there. And I always grew up wanting to be Amish, like very badly. I would wear my hair in braids and I would try to find simple dresses to wear. And I just thought that the coolest life possible was baking bread all day long. I had this little tree that I loved to climb and I would climb all the way to the top and then sit there with my little notebook and I would just write little stories all about the bees that I saw and the butterflies and nature and trees and I remember those stories evolving as I grew into something much darker in a way where I would write stories not just about trees and forests and fairies but about the trees all falling down and dying. And that was a really interesting transition that I noticed myself taking. So when I went into high school, I took this filmmaking class. My final little project was of my friend drowning in a pool. And I was nervous because I wasn't sure how it would be received. And they ended up taking it to a film festival and it won this local film festival. And I couldn't believe it because it was the first time that anybody had bothered to try to understand what I was trying to say. And I was being rewarded for creativity. And up until that point, I had not experienced that. I went to film school for three and a half years and I started to go on film sets and I started working as a PA or a grip or anything that I could on a film set and I hated it. I started photography then because it suddenly dawned on me that photography is a way of creating whole films in single frames. I thought there is nothing better than being able to create by myself as an antisocial person and then seeing the product really quickly. It wasn't until about six months into creating photographs that somebody finally <laughs> said to me, you seem to enjoy this way more than film. And it was almost like someone saying that to me gave me permission to admit that. So we took some shortcuts and we wrapped just a little bit instead of the entire body in yarn, which I thought looked a little bit more feral, I guess you could say. So I really liked that about it. And all in all, it was just a day with a friend and it was a really, really good day. 
for the first year after I started submitting to galleries. I was in 14 different shows and I paid for almost all of them and I went in with my hammer and nails and hung my work and sold a few things but never made my costs back. And I was okay with that because I was doing what I loved and it didn't matter how long it took. So it was only after that first year that I finally was able to sort of dive in and become a full-time artist. I think what was super important during that time was that I defined three very serious goals that I had for myself. One was to create art that I wanted to create on my own terms, and that led me to galleries. The other thing was that I really wanted to write a book, and I self-published the book and barely made any money from it, but I did it. And then the third thing was teaching. I've always wanted to be a teacher. I have a degree in English literature with the hope that one day I would be an English teacher, but I know photography, so why not teach that? I'm then going to photograph this space without our subject, remove the apple box, photograph her feet separately, and then I'll be able to get rid of that black box and have new feet in the picture. And so those three things evolved on their own. The galleries evolved into better and better galleries where I could make a living from selling my works. And the book evolved into a better book deal. And then the teaching evolved into workshops all okay. around the world and motivational speaking. And that's a whole other genre of my work that I do. In 2012, I met a woman named Laura Price who thought that it would be interesting to bring me over to India and to teach this type of photography to young girls who were survivors of human trafficking. And I had been interested in doing charity work, so when she approached me, I said yes. Year after year I went back and I kept doing this workshop with different groups of people and I kept leaving and feeling slight emptiness from it. And then someone said, well, why don't you just make a whole school? And I took it really seriously and I started fundraising and I created the light space. The most moving thing has been realizing that the stories that we tell throughout cultures are essentially the same. That the way that we express grief is the same and the way that we express joy is the same. Once you give someone permission to tap into their emotions and create from that place, so many amazing things happen. What I would say to anybody creating art where maybe you feel some anxiety in sharing that art or putting yourself out there, being really personal, is one, to know that we're all humans. We have the same fears, we have the same anxieties, and being able to confront what scares you and do it anyways, that's how you find art that has meaning, that has depth to it, that has some soul connection to other people. Art is a way of reaching out to others and saying, this is me, I hope somebody understands that. And that's why it's so terrifying, because we don't want to put ourselves out there if there isn't another hand to hold reaching out through the darkness. But there always is. You just have to put it in the right places and try enough times, and then somebody will bite eventually. And I think that we perhaps give up too soon, and we think that it should be easy, but none of this should be. It should be a journey.